G'day. Some of you may recognise this micrometer from my uh, cleaning up uh, measuring equipment uh, video. And one of the things that was apparent to me was missing was a cheek piece. Some of these micrometers have a plastic piece here uh, and I think it's mainly to stop heat transfer through the flame and, and, and perhaps uh, altering the reading from, from its true value. Uh, but uh, this one didn't have it and so I decided well first thing I need to do to get this back up to scratch is to make up some cheek pieces. These are them. Um, they are milled from solid. I've got some little bosses on there and I still have to drill those out for the screws but they fit on there like so, another one on the other side, and uh, that restores the micrometer to much more like, like its original state. I guess I could have bought some, but what's the, what's, uh, what's the fun in buying things when you can make them, right? So uh, this is how I made these up, uh, including a, a trick bit of tooling that I have a bit later on. I'm starting out by taking my material down to size. Um, now there are a couple of issues here. One of them is that uh, plastic being softer than metal, if you put too much pressure on it, it can bow and then you'll get this bit of material with a, with a, with a, uh, a sort of a, a dish in it once it's unclamped. So it's, it's a matter of finding the sweet spot between having it too tight where it bows and having it not tight enough where it slips out. So I'll have to try how I'm doing that. What I'll probably do is take off one side. Once I've got that, to my satisfaction. Uh, I'll then probably clamp direct to the table and, and, and reduce the other side like that. Um, we'll, or, or possibly, um, you know, screw this to a block of wood or something where it's a little bit more uh, stable. We'll have to see. Um, the other thing I'm doing here, I've got a, a fly cutter out. Normally I don't use fly cutters but they're a bit, because they're a bit slow, but when cutting plastic you want a reasonably high uh, feed rate, otherwise it tends to fluff on you. Uh, and so I can use a fly cutter, I have the feed rate set reasonably high, um, you know, take a few shallow cuts perhaps, but uh, fingers crossed that should give me a reasonable finish without bowing it, not too much tool pressure, all that all sort, sort of fun stuff. First side done, uh, I had to back the feed rate uh, down a little bit because although I had uh, lots of non-fluffy chips, uh, I also had a very coarse pattern on there, which is quite nice to look at, but not really what I wanted. I wanted a smooth sort of finish. So I've, I've done one side uh, and measuring across, it's, it's pretty uniform. So happy with that. I'll, uh, I'll continue on, try using the same method to take it down. I need to get this down to about seven and a half and it started off at 12. So uh, yeah, we're getting there. Edges I managed to uh, clean up with my little um, edge plane. Uh, did a very nice job, as you can say, nice uniform chamfer along there. Uh, and uh, you know, for, for clamping things like that, you do need to deburr. So uh, that's all good. There it goes. Before leaving the fascinating subject of making thick things thin, um, just point out to this plastic has been made with a thermal process. It's been, you know, it's been mol it's molten. It's been squeezed through some rolls or a, or an injection slit or something like that to give it its shape, and then it's cooled down. And so you're going to have a lot of built-in stress here. So this is why it's important to take material off both sides. So I did two two and a half mil on one side. I'm now I've now flipped it over and taken the same off, and side to side here. I'm not too bad, but there's a slight dish that way. And so um, I'm going to have to, to uh, when, I, when I clamp this down, I'll have to, to bear that in mind. But it's just something to, to remember that it's not much point in getting a, um, a nice thick bit of plastic, milling it down to uh, thickness all on one side, because what will happen is it'll just banana. A bit further along the track now. Um, after taking my, my material down to a basic thickness, which was, was, is the thickness of the part plus the bosses, so it's basically the, the, the total thickness of the part, I've then gone and put um, a piece of scrap uh, timber on. I could have used aluminium, but I just had the timber sitting around the place and I thought I might as well. Uh, and the reason that you want it scrap is that uh, you'll probably be machining through um, the, the plastic into whatever it is you've got it bolted to. So something, um, this is destined to firewood, so that'll that'll do. So I've um, clamped that down. I've then gone and secured my plastic to it, and I've, I've just used uh, some screws. 
uh, and then relieve this down to the base thickness. The base thickness is going to be two millimeters and then there's the bosses up top and then I've gone and cut out these islands here for those. Okay. Um, in the middle of where the screws are going to go, I've gone and put a, a small, you know, one and a half millimeter hole uh, and that's just going to give me a, a reference point so that if I need to find that, that center, uh, I've got a physical uh, mark that I can look for. The trouble with, with black, of course, is that a black pen doesn't really show up all that well on black. So uh, that's, that's what I'm doing there. Um, the next thing to do is get out the, uh, the secret weapon in all this, which is the, the Volstro head. This is what uh, I refer to as a Volstro head. It's made by the Volstro company. Um, before CNC, people had to work out all sorts of weird ways of getting um, non, should we say, uniform shapes in things. And so this was one of them. Um, so what you've got is a spindle and that moves on a slide. There's a splined gear between it and there's a, a shaft that comes down here with a couple of bevel gears. So I can move this spindle that way, but because of this bit, I can also rotate it round. And so what I'm doing here is I've got this set up to what I hope is the right dimension. And then I'm going around these square lumps that I left and turning them into round bosses. Uh, it's a little bit you know, touchy-feely at the moment because I haven't quite got it dialed into where I'd like it, but that's that's my problem. Um, however, this is this is a, a um, as I said, a, a one way of, of doing this. Another way was um, uh, well, I've only seen them from um, uh, Yakuza, Yakuza, I think it is. It's the it's the same company who makes the batteries, but they also did a lot of machine machine tool accessories. And one of the ones they did was they did a rotary table with an X Y table on top of it. So once again, you could manoeuvre the, the centre of your arcs to the point directly underneath the spindle and do it that way. Um, in this particular case, all I want is a couple of bosses for the, uh, the screws to hold the two parts together to go into. Uh, so I'm going to do those first. Then I'm going to set up and actually make that kidney shape for the, uh, for the rest of it. These are uh, all the bosses done now. Uh, I'm, I'm doing feature by feature just because getting the radius set spot on is, is a pain in the neck with this thing. Um, one day I'll work out a way of, of, of doing it. At the moment I'm just using a dial indicator on a couple of spots and, and, and just winding it back and forth and you know, trial and error sort of thing. But um, they're done. Now I'm actually using a, a router bit here with straight flutes and the reason for that is that a normal milling cutter tends to pull into the material a little bit. Now, I was a bit concerned that with soft, softer material like this plastic, uh, particularly with only two millimeters thick here, that what would happen was that I'd, I'd be pulling into it and possibly even cutting a hole into my plastic. So I'm using a, a straight flute cutter so it doesn't try and pull up. Um, that's all good. I was also going to say about the Volstro head here, these things were originally made for Bridgeport machines. Um, and so this one's, a, as you can see, is a bit of a, a, a Franken thing a jiggy because it's got bits from two different parts. Uh, this was originally broken and I, I, I cut this off, but on the original ones, they've got a little spur which locates on a lug on the, on the Bridgeport milling heads. Um, so if you've ever wanted, if you've got a Bridgeport and you've ever wondered what that little spur is, that little lug, well, that's, that's what it's for. It's for this to locate onto. Um, the originals, of course, came with a, uh, an R8 uh, taper in here. I've had to convert this to a, uh, um, a 40 taper, which is what my mill has, so I can use it. And I also had to uh, machine off the head here, so I've got a locating section. Um, it's not the, um, you know, the, the easiest thing to use for this sort of stuff, but at the same time, it's one of those few bits of kit that will do some of these sorts of jobs if you need them to be done. I've got my large radii in. Uh, that's all good. I'm not going to do these straight sections until last uh, because I've got nothing that's going to be basically hanging on to this hold down section and a straight section I can I can cut with a with a normal sword or something like that and then linish it back and you know it'll all be fine. I'm now going to do these these smaller radii here. Now I'm using a combination of the coordinates on the DRO. I, I, I plotted all this out on, on a CAD package and worked out where my, the centers of my radio, radii had to be. Um, I've adjusted this back to where 
I've got you know the appropriate offset as far as I can tell here and so fingers crossed this will mate up without needing any great sort of uh, finessing to, to, to get it right um, so this one will go in here uh, th I'll do the, then do that one then come back and do this one and do this one and then there's only a small radio in here that I have to worry about uh, so I'll do that the same sort of way, uh, leaving the straight bit, and then um, I'll, I'll need to think about that. I may um, put something across the top here to hold that down and cut that, or I may just, as I was going to do with here, uh, go through with a with a, a saw or something, and then then linish that back. We'll see how we go with that one. merrily milling away bits and pieces there and then um, the final bit I, I milled that bit out and then uh, just used a hacksaw to cut the um, well for want of a bit of terms the sprue off to get the uh, the cheek piece uh, that needs slight flattening because of the um, the, the digital readout so uh, that was just a little bit of linishing there I now need to finish these up I tried using a little bit of uh, 180 grit and that's uh, lost a bit of the gloss so I need to, to go a little bit finer I think I don't I don't particularly want the shiny uh, I want something halfway in between anyway that's uh, that's a Volstro head uh, and that's one of the things it can be used for so uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one